Dan Doolan. I'm Chris Billingham. And join us as we venture into the unknown and overanalyze the garden wall. There you go. Nice. That was good. Good Sli- little intro, Dan. Little, slick little intro that I've, that I've d- decided to do. Yeah, yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Welcome to Overanalyzing the Garden Wall, everyone. The podcast where we really? overanalyze over the garden wall. And and I'll tell you what, like... Well, I'll, um, I'll, well, I do a, I, I'm beginning to, I don't know why I'm really beginning to resent having to do recaps, but, uh, I'll recap the episode quickly because I've, I've got a point on that overanalyzing. Um, the, so this episode, uh, Wirt and Bert, I, can't, I don't know the other guy's, <laughs> what's the other guy's name? Oh my God, Greg, but like, please, can somebody Greg. go back and like, get all the voice cast back together and re-record the show so the names of the characters are Wirt and Bert. <laughs> <laughs> Wirt. I would love that as a DVD extra. Just turn on Wirt Burt Vision, and it just from that point on, just their names are Wirt and Burt. <laughs> Wirt, Wirt, and Wirt, and Greg. Yes. Um, because obviously there's two Wirts. Um, are chilling, to trying <laughs> to work st- out how. To sorry, I can't quite get over Wirt and Burt. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, are. Uh, uh, chilling out. And, That's almost uh, as bad about... as when you accidentally called Stephen Stewart and it started a bit of a meme on oh, our uh, Discord so page. Where everyone kept... Someone has actually changed their name on our Discord, their nickname, to Stuart Universe. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and that was really late on as well. Yeah, it was like, like well over we 100 episodes the... in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, even even sooner, recent, more recently well, than probably, that. Probably, yeah. yeah. A lot of the comments for that one are like, did he just call him Stuart? <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. There's no excuse. Um... So they end up they end up hooking up with this talking bird. I think my recaps have got worse as well. Um, the bird says that they can she can take um, them to Adelaide, who's mm-hmm. like this all knowing person. Um, but Wirt decides to go to Popfields, Pop, Pumpfields, Pot, Pottsville, Potsfield, Pottsville, um, Pottsville, Pottsville, Pottsville no, instead. Um, Pottsville has some weird pumpkin people in. Um, it's described as a ghost town. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do, I'm mainly just watching for ghostly purgatory references. Um, yes. so now, uh, so they decide. Uh, no, they they decide to get the hell out of there because the pumpkins are really creepy. The pumpkins say that they're going to trial them for loads of crimes and that they're going to reduce them to manual labor. They're doing the manual labor, which they kind of end up enjoying, and they end up digging these holes and find a skeleton to so think they dug their own graves. Um and they mm-hmm, Jesus I clocked it. Yeah. Um and uh, but it it wasn't, I'm not actually, laughing at the fact you clocked it. I'm laughing at you pausing to just say the word graves in the most dramatic and poignant way you could think to, which is just to go dig in their own. Leave a little pause. Graves. <laughs> Sorry. The, Carry on. Um, <laughs> so they decide. Uh, so the pumpkins. Uh, it looks like they think they're going to capture them. So the bird. Um, breaks them free of their chains. Beatrice. Um, and then Beatrice be- breaks them free of their chains. But it turns out, actually, they were re- they were digging up skeletons that they're, they're all skeletons, basically. So they mm-hmm. put on the pumpkin heads and they start having a party. And the big, big, massive pumpkin says that it doesn't matter if they want to leave because eventually they will, one day they will join us or something like that. Yeah, you, um, you'll, you'll join us. You'll join us someday. Is the final words? Yeah, letters. you'll join us someday. Um, and they run off to visit Adelaide. So, in terms of the analy- overanalyzing thing, that in a way sums up my big, my big kind of overall feeling at the end of this because I actually am way more invested in this um, than I ever was Steven Universe at this stage. And I won't tread too much ground on why because I think we covered a lot of that last time Mm -hmm. and that you know that idea of maybe Steven Universe has influenced that because I I know it's going to go somewhere yeah but it's kind of I ended up watching and almost more so than Steven Universe which has had some pretty big episodes Mm -hmm. uh recently where I've wanted to watch the next one almost more than that this finished and I was like god I resent having to like chat about this because like I'm now at a point where I'm quite like intrigued and like yeah. I'd love to be able to just watch them in a body of ten as it's designed. Know, that's what's great about this. Um, like it does work. Me and me and Nadia when we watched it originally, basically watched it as a movie. We just sat down and just put it on and just watched until it yeah. was done. And that was that was and, an incredible way to experience it. And I do feel bad that by doing this, we're almost depriving you of that because we're making you well, sort also, of stop and start. <laughs> 
also I don't know how much there is to it's not I don't think the the exciting incidents the monsters of the week um I think their most interesting th- elements I get the feeling are their bigger part in the wider story so I don't even feel like there's as much without knowing that wider story or well without having that wider story confirmed I've got a good theory I don't at least I think it is I don't um I don't feel there's as much to analyze so it's like it, it's kind of like mm-hmm. well what's there to say as well no. and I think actually it's almost like it would almost be best to watch it all and then like maybe either yeah, watch every episode and then go oh well this this means this yeah, now and yeah. this means this but but that's not the format and we're not going to change it now um but that was a big sense um finishing this but it definitely um well, I, think I what, don't know if it helps to it's only 10 episodes, but it definitely had this one definitely more so than the first one had me like, what the hell's going on? And I don't know if that's maybe because if we have to go, if we have to overanalyze, I don't know if maybe that's because I find the skeleton pumpkins a bit more intriguing than what mm-hmm. is essentially a, a an old dude and, and a dog. Um, mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of setup in that first episode. Yes. Whereas like this you, the madness of the woods and the world is a bit more apparent um mm-hmm. and therefore a bit more intriguing this notion that they're going to tie all this madness up um yeah which they have to do because because this this series wouldn't be renowned in the way it is if they didn't if these were just random escapades i don't think people would be talking about it it has to no. all make sense in the end yeah um so i found the skeletons kind of visually interesting but mm-hmm. just as a kind of as a hook as a what the hell like i thought that was stronger than the than the stuff last week i suppose if we're condensing it and like if we are doing that comparison to steven universe i suppose if you're comparing this to steven universe this is like this is episode 20 of steven universe in a weird way do you know what i mean like you you because yeah, yeah. you, you've got to you, so they're, they're making their progress obviously much quicker so they're drawing you in quicker than steven universe did because obviously they, they you know this is a mini series and it doesn't have it doesn't need to sort of draw it out at all it can just it can just get straight to the point which i suppose means you know not having fewer characters to get because i think that's how it works i think because a lot of people would say but you guys always say that on steven universe What's why you get so invested is because you get to spend so much time with all the townies first and get to know everyone. That is a hundred percent true, and I do think that helps with the investment but because this has a more focused cast list. There, are, there are essentially really two people we should be really caring about at this point. And well, what... uh, and also, do you, sorry to interrupt you, mm-hmm. um, but do you think also <laughs> there fundamentally this is two lost children? That's a. I know Stephen. It's, a, you, it's Steven, a simpler it's a, setup it's, for sure. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of emotive weight um, in the characters with that alone. I don't oh, mean I it's a saying. simple yeah, setup. Yeah. I mean, Stephen, Stephen is has been described not necessarily. I don't know if I necessarily feel as strongly as this, but Stephen's been quite described as quite obnoxious at first, and he's mm-hmm. um, he's surrounded by all these aliens and all of that kind of stuff. This is too lost children mm. who clearly aren't sure where they are how to get home almost like they're in like a, a dream or something mm-hmm. and it's it it seemingly is potentially a, a frightening scenario and i think there are certain scenarios and things which will carry emotional weight and in terms of getting to know the characters and getting to feel for the characters i think the fact that they are lost children who don't know where they are draws you in and does a bit i think the premise does a bit of that work i agree in terms of getting to um connect to the characters and ultimately the the premise does seem simpler (laughs) like it like that's a big factor like which is what i thought you were getting at but obviously you had you had a a, a different and an arguably more interesting point (laughs) but the uh yeah i think that i think that the, the between the simplicity of it i think you can sort of counteract that argument that i made in terms of like like analyzing this, I think there's still plenty of bits to talk about because I think there's some cool, interesting sort of stuff that this episode sort of does. Uh, first of all, I love this this really weirdly dark tone the show is setting up, and I want to talk to you about that a little mm. bit because I think it's hard to imagine this is a kids show because it's so dark. This is this is so dark. These are literally these are these are 
dead people. These are skeletons that are like having some weird ceremony and they're dressing themselves in pumpkins so they have, I guess, like a slightly fleshier sort of form to them. And and, and, and like, there's just something really weirdly dark about that. And this notion that, you know, you, you'll be here someday, like that this idea that like we're, we're all mm. going to the same place, like further reminders of your impending death. You know, we are all dying at the rate of one minute per minute. Like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's just really freaky to like... To sort of put those ideas forward, and in a kids show, it's it's again, it's why I think kids TV these days is like breaking so much new ground. Is because they're getting, they're having the freedom to sort of deal with some of this stuff and not really be um, tied to like, it's like they're allowed to talk to kids in a, in in other ways. And we talked about in our recent Steven Universe sort of censorship episode that sometimes that doesn't work in certain countries. But I do think the fact that these shows are getting made at all is remarkable, and I think the tone of this from the first through to this one, like it's so dark. So strange. But Love in it. that in that case, I put to you what age, and we're not kids and don't have kids, so this might be hard to notice mm-hmm. to, to say, but what age do you think you pick up that as a reference to death? And what age is it just kooky penguins? <laughs> um, did you say kooky penguins? <laughs> Sorry, kooky skeletons. I have no idea where penguin came from. <laughs> I don't know. I could tell what you were doing. You're making a joke that I didn't get there or not. Um, that's a really good question. No, there's um, the the only thing I could put that down to is there's a Batman poster on the wall. <laughs> like, so, the penguin, but yeah, no, I meant skeletons. Amazing. amazing. Um, so, um, I yeah, you're right. I think there's a certain element, but I I not kids aren't as dumb as we think. Like, I think that it's it's right in front of them. The skeleton is coming out of the ground. And he's saying you'll come, you'll be here someday. Like I, I don't know how else you interpret that. Even as a child, you it might not. That's the thing is that kids have a different perspective on what's dark and what isn't. Like it's they they, they think about things very differently. So like I don't know. Yeah, and I don't. Them, I don't remember tone. ever. I don't remember ever viewing funny bones as as a you know. I don't remember ever thinking about the logistics of these. Yes, characters. but for those uh, for those who don't know, funny bones. I think it's a, was that a British thing, funny bones. I'm not sure. It was a it was a cartoon that a kid about what well, it was like a sitcom about skeletons, animated skeletons. Yeah. But I think F- Funny Bones never made references to the fact that like you know you'll all be skeletons in the end. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like Funny Bones had a very different tone to this show. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's it's. it's yeah. it, but it's it's oozing with tone. This show, not just that element of it as well, not just the dark, but like it just feels really poetic all the time, and it just feels really arty and like really clever and like this. Uh, it's the the world they're the picture they're painting and the world they're building feels so specific everything from the music to the choice of colors is just building this tone and it is it's just thick with it and it you could cut it with a knife and it is beautiful and it is actually one of my favorite things about this show and I, and there's so few shows i can say where the tone is such strong contender for like one of the best elements of it but this is one of them i mean if we're talking about tone this is a masterpiece this is a master class in how to build it for sure mm-hmm. I, I mean yeah i don't know how, how whether you agree i think i do but do you think the animation carries a lot of weight for that like there's only so much you can do with um uh, color palettes in live action camera shot stuff um, um no y- because if you've got us a... i I, I see what you're saying. You're right. In a live action world, like you know, you can't bend the li- you can't a- bend reality to look a certain way. Whereas in an animated no, world, but, uh, you can well, stylize what, everything. Well, what I mean more by if you've got a scene set in in a nightclub at two a.m. and a scene set in a park at seven p.m., you you're having to do a lot of work to keep a consistent tone. In terms of the, you know, the natural color palette of the scenario, whereas you can, in an animation that, you know, you can anim- you can still animate them and color them a certain way to keep consistency. I I agree, but I think the strength of this and the reason the tone of this jumps out the way it does, like you get this show's tone straight away in the first episode, and this really, this one like really seals it. And I think the reason that is, because these two episodes look very different. One is very dark and one is very bright. It's daytime throughout most of this episode. Um, I mm. think I think the reason it's so effective here is because it's actually the way they tie the things together to create something that feels really fluid and together. The music 
combined with the storytelling and that weirdly sort of dark undertone to the storytelling and what's physically happening in the story, combined with these oddly gothic images that also have this something kind of friendly and Disney about them at the same time, that combination of things being mushed together creates the tone of this show. And, and I think one piece missing and it doesn't work anywhere near as well <laughs> do you know what i mean mm. uh, so so i think what i'm really complimenting is actually the synergy between everything like whoever oversaw all this whether it is the creator and writer or if there was someone else as well on, on the producer on the production side of things that made sure the writing and the music and the visuals were all together that way i i, I don't know who was the defining voice where i, I assume that the, the person who created it and wrote uh, a chunk of it but dear lord like it's it is a masterpiece and a masterclass for anyone who wants to learn how to build tone because it isn't just the visuals. While that is hugely important, it is it is a combination of everything and it's all working together so well in the show um, that I, yeah, I can't not love it. Why has he got a saucepan on his head? The, it's, uh, it's Isn't it a teapot upside down? Oh, sorry, yeah, teapot. Um, watch and see. Looks, I just, yeah. I just kept wondering. I wondered that more this time than last time, I believe. <laughs> I was just um, like, hmm. In terms of other stuff to compliment about this episode, and actually if we're just sort of reviewing it as an episode, uh, this is the funnier of the first two, I think. There's a lot more good gags in this. I like The first one is funny. This one's hilarious. Like, it's got that, um, if you do, a, if you, I'll do you a good turn. Can you turn me into a tiger? I'm not magical. It doesn't have to be a magic tiger, which just yeah. is a great, <laughs> is a great line. Um, I also I liked I liked the dynamic that she brings. Actually, I like this notion that they've somehow managed to with Beatrice. They've somehow managed to create a character that seems like she's hiding stuff and knows more than she's letting on. But also, Mm -hmm. when you have her not know what's going on, like with the pumpkins, that still makes sense as well. So if you if if the next episode she was gonna she was able to have loads of knowledge. I'd buy that. If the next episode they ended up in an area that she was scared of, I buy that as well. Yeah, it's quite impressive. Yeah, she's very cleverly written. I mean, what, what do you think to it? So they met her in the first episode briefly. She's like one of the first things they run into in the woods, and they're like talking bird, and then they get wrapped up in the stuff with the woodsman. And at the end of that episode, as they're leaving after having his directions given to them, that she is sort of seen to be sort of watching them in the trees. And then this week they find her after they've been traveling presumably all night, at least hours is the hint, and she sort of is stuck in a tree nearby. And so like when I first saw this, I felt like she was deliberately trying to work her way into their situation for some reason or another. So I was very suspicious of her offer to help them because, and even when she has an oh, out, right. because even when she has an out at the end and work goes, well, you know, you've helped us out of that situation now, I guess you're free. She's like, well, not technically, you know, I'm stuck here because, you know, you weren't in any real danger, which is kind of like, wait, you had an out, you could go, like, you're not, you know what I mean? Like, she's been rolling her eyes all episode and going, oh, I'm stuck here because, you know, I said I'd help you guys. And yet, she's found an excuse to stick around. So I, 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 I was questioning, not necessarily that they were negative or positive, but I was seriously pondering what her motives were after watching this episode. I- I felt like she was equally lost and and mm-hmm. potentially lonely. Like she says some what does she say at the end that sort of hints that she's got much like the the old guy who had to like get the oil. She seemed to have some shit that she had to she, do. She says um I'm going to Adelaide anyway and then they're like oh why and she's like well I guess in some ways I'm trying to get home too. And then they make a really good joke where yeah. Wurt says something like well that sounds vague. <laughs> Yeah, and she's like, I don't have to tell you anything. Yeah, yeah something much. like that. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah so, I, yeah, which just again made me think purgatory and having to do stuff before you move on or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, I got, I didn't, I was less, I, well, less, I wasn't at all suspicious uh, like you were. Well, I mean, I think suspicious is maybe the wrong phrase because suspicious suggests that she's got some sort of negative thing you she's were, up to. But I was, I was, were, go on. Let you think of the words. You were like, you were like, Beatrice is a bit dodge. Yeah, Beatrice is a bit dodge. That was it because I couldn't figure it out. Her, I didn't buy her being like, oh, I'm stuck in the tree. Help me out. And I also thought like, and again, I found it suspicious that she was like, mm, suspicious again is the wrong word, but like, I found it, I found it odd that she was sort of not taking the out 
and was sticking around with them. But like at the same time, you're right. It could be. A, it could. I did also wonder if it could be as simple as that. She just wanted to hang out with them because she didn't have anyone else, and she's a talking bird, and maybe none of the other birds talk, and that leaves her quite lonely. <laughs> um, which is totally we've which, seen. Which also wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> no, we haven't seen any of the birds, have we? Um, I mean, there there were there were geese flying in the opening shot, but you know they were just sort of in the, okay. the, the the sort of they were just set to the music they were just sort of like there was some, one of, there was a couple of shots of like local wildlife wasn't there was like a cricket hopping on some leaves and i'll some... be honest with you mate I've, I've seen it once i'm skipping that intro now saving time and it you know it's different Boom. every week skip intro is it really you know what when i skipped it this week i did think i wonder if it's a bad idea to skip this <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah I, I won't do that and again. i think it, i think it builds tone because i think it's like it's like it's 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 uh, it, again it sort of sucks you in it's like the music hits you get these weird like sort of awful shots of the woods uh, and, and it's i mean the first episode had like a had a more full intro as well it's only a couple of seconds in the second episode uh so you didn't you didn't skip oh, much. Is it? okay but uh, okay. yeah but it's, i think it's worth i think it's worth to... Is it, it seemed to jump quite a bit on the timeline in, in, in or, or Netflix using like the first episode intro every week or something. No, no, because I'm watching it on Netflix also, and it just uh, yeah. Oh, it's okay, different. fine. No. Um, but so yeah. Um, where was I? So yeah, Beatrice. So, so you're you're just convinced that the, you, you don't think she's a bit dodgy. You just think she's like lonely or something. I think she's in a similar position to whatever's going on with them. Interesting. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I also really like the gag about the rocks. When he was trying to explain that the rocks were the way, he's like, "You don't like rocks, do you?" And they're like, "No, tell us about the rocks." I just yeah. that whole no. What, that made what me I laugh loved so about much. that. <laughs> what I loved about that is one of them went, "I don't think we like rocks." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a great line. <laughs> um, and then I, I also did you notice the foreshadowing of the reveal? So at the end, of, towards the end of the episode, they reveal this whole skeleton thing, but they actually set it up really early in the episode. When when they first arrive at the barn where the sort of harvest festival is happening, one of the characters says to work, one of the pumpkin people says to work, aren't you a little too early? It doesn't seem like you're ready to join us yet. Which at the time is weird and vague. It doesn't make much sense. But once you know what's going on in that town, yeah. that line is really haunting. Aren't you a little too early? It doesn't seem like you're ready to join us yet. Yeah, because they've got skin. Ugh, yeah, that is daunting. Um, I was more. I noticed more. Um, it would look weird if a pumpkin was just on its own. And so when the skeleton, I was like, oh, that explains that why they're wearing clothes then, and why he reacts like that when he says you're in a costume. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That also ties into it. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that one more than um, mm-hmm. more than the early one. I d- hadn't, now you've said it, I remember it and clock it, but I hadn't clocked it in a way that I'd been like, oh, that's what the costume thing was about. Yeah. Do you think there was anything to 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 the to the ignoring of the uh, of the of the woodsman's directions? He told them to go north last week. They clearly did that. He said, find a town. They found a town. Didn't work out great for them. Now they're just following Beatrice. Do you think? It, do you think it's going to come back to haunt them that they that they're, they're ignoring the woodsman? Yeah, that woodsman seemed to know his shit. So, he did, didn't yeah, he? I reckon so. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't it. It was Christopher Lloyd, wasn't it? It was Christopher Lloyd played the woodsman. So you know you gotta you gotta trust Christopher Lloyd. I mean, admittedly, he's doing <laughs> car adverts now, but still, yeah. If you can't trust Christopher Lloyd, who can you trust, Chris? Just in general, what, what in exactly? Life. Yeah, exactly. um, I also really like the gag um, when he's listing their crimes. He's like, just you know, destruction of property and disturbing the peace and murder. And they're like, murder. And he's like, no, not that one. Uh, the other one. <laughs> like, because yeah, it's, just, well, I was... it's such a dark moment. And then like, like, wait, what? Like he's, it's just like they throw a gag in. Like they don't care. I love it. Well, I, I, working on my theory that they're in like some sort of purgatory thing. Mm-hmm. I was trying to listen out for that list and meant to rewind it and rehear it to see if there was like, you know, if it was like, your crimes are stealing a fridge and getting eaten to death by a dog. I'd be like, mm-hmm. Um, but I, yeah, I couldn't really make too much from that. Do you want me to, you want me to, to see if I can, I, can quick, I, can, I yeah. can quickly find it for you if you want to hear the, the full... Do it. Do it. What was it? was called Hard Times at the Huskin B this episode, wasn't it? Let's see. Um, I just have to... Control F for murder, don't I? 
Okay, so by order of the Pottsfield Chamber of Commerce, I find you guilty of trespassing, destruction of property, disturbing the peace, and murder. And Wirt responds, murder? And he goes, oh no, not murder. But for those other crimes, I sentence you to... And that's when they hit us with a few hours of manual labour. So I don't think there is... Which is also good. I think you could... Destruction of property, so maybe an accident of some kind? Well, I assumed that was related to them stomping on the... Because on the way in, they stomp on some... Crops. Oh yeah, that makes more sense. So trespassing, destruction of property, and disturbing the peace, which is disturbing their party, I guess. Mm, yeah, I suppose that fits. You're right. Yeah. Um, what? What else can I just say though that I absolutely love about this is have you noticed that there's a running theme here of things seeming like a threat that aren't a threat at all? Like in this episode, and it's kind of remarkable actually in general because the tone of this one is like. It's like you feel like they're constantly in danger as you're going through this episode. And you do feel that when you're watching it, but they literally never are. <laughs> At no point are they ever in danger in this episode. Yet the whole thing feels like they're in danger. Mm. And that's a remarkable piece of writing, isn't it? To make the characters feel like that. But there was also a tone of, there was also a vibe of that in the last episode as well, where, you know, the thing that was a threat turned out not to be so, so, so threatening, you know. Um, it was just a nice normal dog that had happened to eat the... Uh, that had eaten the, the swallowed the turtle. Yeah, and the old man as well. I think he was genuinely trying to keep them safe as well. Mm-hmm. And like, and that's the thing is, if he if he sent them with the in, the intention of them heading to Pottsville, he, that's not bad directions. It's clearly safe there. <laughs> like, I don't know if that's where he meant them to end up, or if he just thought they could once they get there, then you know they could be maybe led else, you know, onwards to wherever and keep heading north, maybe. Mm. Um, but like, I mean. He made it very clear the beast, as he knows it, is still out there. Um, so ignoring that and then heading back sort of where to the woods are the, the, the thickest, which is almost where they... Well, I guess he's back roughly in the direction they started to see this Adelaide. I think that's really potentially um, a bad move. But they are children, so decision-making, not their standpoint. But I, I do love this idea that like everything in this world that's so, so far that we've come across that seems threatening has not been a threat at all. <laughs> Just, I'd be surprised if they kept that up for the entire show, though. Also, Maybe. yeah, I, I, yeah, I would, I would, I would have agreed with that in the uh, uh, at this stage for sure. And just to clarify the exact phrasing, because I think we should quickly talk about this potential for what Adelaide could be or not be. Um, Adelaide is described in, initially by Beatrice as Adelaide of the pasture, the good woman of the woods. Thoughts. She's. Well, yeah, well, I don't want to go with the obvious answer, but I suppose the obvious answer is she's like the, you know, she's the person deciding whether you go, whether you go on or live. I guess maybe I don't know. Um, pastures a mm-hmm. a pr- type of priest, isn't it? No, no, Adelaide of the pasture. Pasture being like the green, the land. It's like it's like um. Okay. That's a locational thing, I think. But you're thinking of pa- you're thinking of the word you're thinking of the word pastor, which is like a a type of like priest in some churches. I really thought you were going to say which is a type of uh, Italian food. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, pa- pastor, as in P A S T O R. Right. Uh, that, right, but okay. this is this is pasture, as in like I think it's like a like a green like patch of grass isn't it pasture pasture well, or it might just be referring to it let me just uh, let me just look at the exact definition of the word past pasture well yeah that that in my first instant is my guess then land covered the with grass and other low plants suitable for grazing animals especially cattle or sheep okay so yeah yeah woman woman of purgatory woman of that's that would be my guess so maybe i'm getting too hung up on this purgatory thing um she's also referred to as the good yeah. woman of the woods The good woman. Mm. I don't know. Um, but I think that's what's quite nice. Although I've got this overarching theory, I'm just kind of uh, enjoying the, the, the ride, mystery. actually. Mm. I know we're only two episodes in, but I really felt like... I just had this this thought of if... You know, if I... So like the um, the other week, Jess was, wasn't in and I had the evening if I had this kind of feet sense of if I'd have watched that this then and we weren't doing this, I'd have just sat there and watched all of it. And I definitely got that 
that vibe. It's not like now that we, because I'm, we started recording immediately after I finished watching. So it's not like now I'll be like, when are we going to book the next one? I need to, I need to watch it all. I need to watch it. But, um, mm. it, you know, when watching it, I definitely feel that way. And so I like the fact that like, I don't know or have any real theories for who she is because, you know, it's just a sense of well, I'm just a lot. I'm just on the roller coaster now. And it's it's the, it's a shame because it's. I wish trip. there's no way for us to gauge, is there? How much of that is this show just being better than Steven Universe uh, initially bringing you in, and how much of it is just that you now trust a bit more because you yeah. had the experience. Of, there's no. There's literally no way to know. We'll never have the answer to which it is. But uh, and it's, I, it's, I, it's I certainly think, a combination of both. Universe. Yeah, definitely. I think I think but but undoubtedly I think Steven Universe plays a big part in that. Yeah. But I also do think that like I do think this is better at bringing you in initially uh, than Steven Universe was. Steven yeah, Universe ha- is... had a had a carefree like we really don't care if you're into this or not. We're just going to have fun with it and like we'll get there when we get there. Like when we've built it properly and we've developed the world as much as we want to, then we'll start exploring it more in the meantime, just enjoy the fun. And like that, and they would, they obviously went in with that as their intent. They didn't sit down going, let's make it really hard to get into. They obviously just wanted to build it up in a certain way, you know, and that led to some people feeling that the first half of the first season is a little bit slow. Um, and doesn't really get to the mythology stuff soon enough, but I mean, so, so I, I do think there's also a truth to this notion that this show is actually just genuinely better uh, bringing you in earlier. But, but I, I think part 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 of that as well, though, is a logistics thing. It's only 10 episodes. Like, from what's been said about this most recent season of uh, BoJack Horseman, I was really like, oh, maybe I should no, get, so back into, get, get back into BoJack Horseman. But then, yeah. like, someone put on the Discord, like, I think it was Cram, was just like, wow, BoJack Horseman is 25 hours. And I was just like, oof. I don't know then. <laughs> like it's it's five seasons. So. No, but you know he said it was five hours. It's not long at all. Like and not a, a season. Oh yeah, the whole five seasons together. But no, it's he was complimenting that it's short. Like a season of BoJack. Oh, wait, it's only five hours. No, I thought it was each 25. season. It's five hours. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So yeah, if there's right. five seasons, so yeah, twenty five hours. But but I, what I will say is like I've never known a show so easily bingeable. Like I have never. I've watched each season of BoJack within a week of its release, usually. And like tonight, tonight is the the sixth day since it was released, and we have three episodes left. We're probably going to watch tonight. So like, I've kept that yeah. up. It's really easy to watch in bulk. You watch you watch four or five episodes, don't realize it's happened. They're twenty minutes long. You've watched two episodes in the time you would normally have watched an episode of a normal show. You do that, and it's eleven, twelve an episode season. Then you suddenly it's a six episode season. But that's my point with this. You could watch two of these in 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 the you know twenty oh, minutes is short, but you could watch two. Like I think, oh I yeah, think it's um, I think that plays a part in it as well. Probably not for people that are big into animation, but for me, I think that plays a part in it as well. It's like yeah. oh, I could burn through yeah, these yeah. in a night. No, no, I hundred percent agree with that. Um, I need a new chat. You know what? I've noticed this list editing old uh, like no old, but editing like recent hiatus. Stephen Universities that my chair like. You hear this like creaking? Like I've just got. Oh gotta... right, I see. See, I I've been I've noticed that too. But I've assumed it was you moving about, and I'm picking up something that your mic probably isn't. Like I you're think, getting water I think, or letting Walt out or something. I think it was quiet for the longest time, but still happening, and you were hearing it faintly. But I think the I think like in the last month or so, the chair's gone off the deep end, and now it's just a really noisy. Really, look at that. That's horrible. So what are you doing then in the chair? I'm just literally one? sliding slightly to the left, slightly to the right, like slight a slight rock, Chris. <laughs> not a, wow. not a vigorous rock, just a slight. Well, one. Fucking keep still would be one piece of advice that would be good for. Well, that, yeah, but... but like if I want to get my laptop or like because I because this the room I'm in now since we moved is a little bit um isn't as uh, isn't as wide. So if I sit behind my desk and have the mic on the new stand pointing out, then I'm right up against the wall and I can't lean back. And as we've established recently, Chris, I quite like to lean back when I'm doing these. Um, and, uh, and I mean, so- I think you should have less of a casual approach to the podcast, but carry on. Hey, I, right, I watched this episode twice and made notes for this podcast. I am taking this very seriously. There is nothing casual about the way I'm approaching it. Okay, fair mm. enough. I watched episode one again. I did do that. Did you? Good. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a little. It's been a bit of distance between us recording. Yes, the first we, one of these I, I don't. I mean, it doesn't day. really make too much. It has. I don't think it's made too much difference. But yeah, we we unfortunately um, just due to scheduling, we recorded the first one like God weeks and weeks ago, like literally about a month ago, and then we've uh, we've just not had time. But that was the premise, wasn't it? The idea for us was that we would record these at our own pace and release them. Yeah, and to be honest with you, I don't mind. I think you get more from it. Like, and I think the reason it's not affected it is because you you know it and have watched this one twice and we've and you're asking a lot of questions and I've I've done it and I don't actually like Mm -hmm. um in a way I would rather than exhaust us out because like take next week for example I'm away the week after which means we've got to do an MBS we've got to do an SU I'd actually almost rather re-watch them and pull because I think to be honest with you that helped my that probably helped my enjoyment of this episode and that probably is one of the reasons one of the reasons my big takeaway is, oh, I'd really like to just plow through these because I watched two in a row and, and it felt really easy. Yeah, it did. So, it's, I do, yeah, it's such so, a watchable show. I mean, I have yeah, in the past... So I think I may, even if we leave a big break is my point, I don't think people need to worry because I think I'd do it again with the first two and then the third. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's awesome. It's It's such a good show. And I think... Like, in the past, I have described this as a masterpiece. Um, you're You're obviously... You'll be reserving judgment until you've seen the entirety of it. I, I, I would hope, but um, like on the whole, how are you, how close are you feeling to it becoming like to how, how close are you to understanding or agreeing with that perspective that people like really, really love and revere this show? Oh, I can see. I can. I mean, I've not had enough to get that, but I can see the pieces of why other people would feel that way. Mm-hmm. Is the close up? Is the eerie close up at the end on the leaf? Does that mean anything? Is that gonna? come to fruition in any way well i mean i won't answer the 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 question directly but like this show isn't it's it's one very heavily designed but it is also very like it does like to just sort of like use a lot of symbolism and if you look at the lyrics to the song that were in the intro the first one it talks about you know the gentle breeze and stuff and blowing in a certain way and like so it might just be you could argue that it is significant, but you could also argue it's just a symbolic part of the imagery about sort of having to just sort of go with what's going on at the moment. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 good. It, like I said, I I don't know any other cartoon that does that does like so that's a cartoon animated show that does um it's quite filmic things. Do you know what I mean? Like a lot of the animated yeah. shows I watch feel like animated sitcoms. Like even BoJack, which is a great show visually speaking and like in terms of its staging it's usually staged and uh, like the camera angles that are chosen are not so cinem- uh, so much cinematic as they are like a sitcom um well avatar yeah that's what i was gonna say there's a couple but then there are there are few and far between avatar is extremely cinematic show 100 percent. but like a lot I, of the ones i, I watch don't didn't you? what was that sir don't do that no go on carry on sorry i completely interrupted you yeah no it's fine uh so yeah i think that what's great about this show is they do do that sort of stuff they take the time to sort of mm. shoot things in a dramatic way like the shot in this episode when the camera pans up and reveals that the thing they were dancing around isn't some sort of weird maypole but is instead a giant pumpkin creature um was you know was pretty awesome if i'm being honest with you <laughs> um i really like that so yeah cool to you i know just briefly because we're probably this might be the second time people hear us talk about it uh-huh. but i feel like and admittedly i've not seen all of avatar yeah and i get the original creators are on board and mm-hmm. i get that it's being co-produced with nickelodeon mm-hmm. but am i the only one that's kind of like well the original's so good and strong why do we need a live action version i see i'm i don't seem as excited as everyone else about that um, I think people just like the, the the world so much they want to see more of it, and I think as well the okay. world but is so the world want? is so you... the world well the world is so visually innovative and so like and the show was very restricted by Cartoon Network's budgeting and fuck not Cartoon Network sorry Nickelodeon's budgeting and fucking around with it um, that there were episodes that weren't as epic as they wanted them to be and I think people seeing some of the it's like Harry Potter it's like saying like you know. Would you, would you want to see a live action Harry Potter having having read the books? Well, yeah, because like I want to see what that looks like live action. Do you know what I mean? There's an element of like I want to see what Barsing okay. say would, yeah, look, makes would, would look like in a live action world. And I also think like with a live action version, if they go with the tone of Lost in Space, they could it would become a very different thing. It would have the it would be the world building of Avatar, but with a new tone and a new approach. Um, 
it would still need to have some of the humor and stuff but like it it would be a little less colorful maybe a little darker and i think a lot of the people who grew up on avatar are now older and like a good dramatic show and the idea of a readaptation of that thing darker would be what they're after of course we should really be saving this conversation chris because you never know it might be coming up on this week's nothing but static well i assume it will yeah sorry we uh you're right we should <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah it's no i just topic. it's been on it's been yeah, for, the, it's for those been on my mind yeah, well for those listening um and you'll probably be able to go back and listen to us talk about it in more depth on nothing but static because it will be one of the, my chat skip stories spoiler alert for chris who doesn't know that yet um well, I assume if a story's exciting enough to you for you to send me the article separate to the podcast, I assume if it's yeah, your channel skip, it's, it's going in, or if it's mine, <laughs> you're subtly telling me to put it. In. <laughs> yeah, I assume, and yeah. it's annoying because there's a lot of TV to talk about this week, but already there's been a couple of stories that I'm like, oh, that probably be on the podcast. Yeah, there's, like there's, the a, mar- there's a there's a there's a Marvel key, story that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Loki so Scarlet mm-hmm. Witch thing, which is ridiculous. So yeah, just to well. set it in time, like that we obviously by the time you guys are hearing this, it's obviously, but this week that was announced. If you're wondering why suddenly we're talking about Avatar: Last Airbender, anyway, we are off topic. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. There's no, sadly no trivia on this episode, which made me sad. No triv, Chris. Nothing at all. Oh, man. It's funny because the, 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 the wiki for this is really sparse. Literally, when you go to the wiki page for this episode, it literally goes... Um, it has a description of the episode, which is a couple paragraphs long, which looks reasonably detailed, actually. Like, you wouldn't notice that, the, that you wouldn't feel like this article was thin. And then it goes characters, lists the characters. Songs, lists the two songs. And then it goes trivia, add. General, add. Continuity, add. <laughs> no, it's well. just... There's nothing. Um, I think this um, th- this show, I think a lot of that kind of stuff just becomes apparent on rewatch. Mm. Uh, like, uh, this means this and this means this. Oh, there's some reference to stuff here, actually, that I've just spotted. Oh, this is interesting. Um, the town name of Pottsfield may refer to Potter's Fields or Pot plots of land where farmers and hard labourers were buried in unmarked graves because they could not afford personal graves with headstones. This could explain why the town... Well, surely that definitely refers to that. <laughs> yeah, that seems very specific, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. Well, there you go. Cool. There we go. Tiny right. bit, a tiny bit of triv. A little nibble of triv. Good. Little, no, I like little that snack that, of triv. That makes... <laughs> That makes a hell of a lot of sense. Well, but what's funny about this article is you scroll down and it, after, you know, it says like trivia, non, like general, non, continuity, non. And you go to the very bottom, there's one comment on this article. It's just somebody from 2015 saying, we need more people to add to this. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Get on is it, that guys. Like a fan, is that like a over the garden wall specific wiki? It is. Like, yeah. yeah. Wiki, do you mean literally Wikipedia? No, it's the it's the fan one. It's the wikia. Yeah. Mm. Which, so, uh, yeah. There you go. Or whatever it's called. Cool. Yeah. Right. So, oh, well, thanks very much for uh, yeah for, for 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 listening, guys. We really appreciate it. Obviously, we'll be back in uh, another week um, to do another one of these. Um, won't be a week for us. It'll be, probably be a little more. But um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to keep doing this. I, I'm really enjoying it, looking at the show, and I think it's uh and it's really it's it's satisfying to me to hear you getting into it, Chris. Um, I really that's, that's yeah. Good. No, I am definitely no. cool. All right. Well, thanks Sweet. very much. There we go for listening. I've been Dan Doolan. I've been Chris Billingham, and we'll speak to you guys next time as we continue to overanalyze the Garden Wall. Did we decide these had add ons? I can't remember. I think we said we'd figure it out, but we didn't. I, can I just say how proud I am of us, Chris? That we. Yeah, man. That we didn't make a. F- fuss about the very good title that you came up with well, that's what we're doing that's what we're doing now thank you for pointing out i came up with it i was very proud of that i know i also quite like the way it was like do you want to just end like in this extra bit which we're doing now um for uh do you want to just say like the scenario in which i sent it and you read it was it, i was half asleep was this the story yeah, and just kind of just and I sent it with no context. I just sent the title. I didn't say, "Oh, I yeah. thought of this or da da da." What did I reply? I can't. I, can't, I think I just wrote like "nailed it" or something like that. I think like, yeah, you were just like "nailed it" and then like went back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, like literally, I was I was half asleep. I'd like I'd worked a long shift or something. And, like Chris, I guess you. I guess you've been out. Had you been out drinking? Was that a, was? Did I have I imagined that part of the story? Had you been out? No, I don't know if I'd been, I don't, not on like, uh, I wasn't drunk or anything. I don't know if I'd like had a long day, been out after work and like sometimes, I don't know about you, but like 
if I take, for example, if I go straight from work to out for a drink with colleagues and then home, or if I've been at a rehearsal or something like that, if I've been out and I'm not, I don't get in until the time where we come in and go to bed, then I like to play on my phone. I like to piss mm-hmm. about. Like, do you know what I mean? And I don't know if like it had just got to midnight because I was doing that. But yeah, right, I, gotcha. I don't remember the story. But it yeah. was late. It was late. And I, I'd either... I'd either, yeah, I must have, I think, been not like out on the booze, but I'd been out and was just bumming about. Yeah, yeah so my, my, my I think I, I, sort of, I, think, I think I woke I, up at like four in the morning or something to like, I can't remember exactly, but I, th- I woke up, like looked at my phone and I just said over analyzing the Garden Wall, I was just like, that's it, you got it, that's the one. And then I went back to bed. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. did you wake up and go, did Chris send me a title for a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. And then I properly checked it and was like, yeah, no, my, my, my sleepy self was correct. So that's how the title came about. But yeah. We yeah, did, but we... I think I had, weirdly, I didn't think of it in that moment. Like, I thought of it, like, earlier in the day or the week, but it's not like, a, oh, yeah, I just thought of it and went, oh, yeah, I think that's good. And then just a dead way. Did you, ju- did you like, just oh, yeah, send the okay. title? Or did you send the title and then put the word boom after it? Or did I add the word boom? No, I think I sent the title, like, in the... You'd have to... Oh, no, you can't search that easily on Messenger, can you? But, like, I'd... Um, I think I'd sent... I think I sent the title either in the middle or immediately after us talking about something else. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely Like, amazing. I think I'd responded to you about something else and then just been, like, overanalyzing the garden wall. <laughs> but I was really pleased, yeah. No, it was good. Very good. Cool. Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Then yeah. this we've extended the episode length, but there you go. One of those things. Thanks yeah, everyone yeah. for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>